El Namul, the tribe of Namul, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Tau Seen, I am the benign, the all hearing God. These are the verses of the Quran, of the book that tells the right from the wrong and makes the truth manifest. It is a guidance and good tidings to the believers who observe prayer and regularly spend in charity and who are such people as have firm faith in the hereafter. As to those who do not believe in the hereafter, we had made their deeds fair seeming to them, but they wander on aimlessly, making all sorts of blunders. It is they for whom there awaits a grievous punishment. It is these alone who shall be the greatest losers in the hereafter. And, as a matter of fact, you are being made to learn the Qur'an from the presence of the all-wise and all-knowing God. Recall when Moses said to his companions, Surely I see with feelings of warmth of love, something like a fire. I will soon bring you some important information from there or at least bring you a flaming brand so that you may warm yourselves. So when he came close to it, he was called by a voice, Blessed be he who is in quest of the fire of divine light, and blessed are those around this place of the fire. Holy is Allah, the Lord of the worlds. O Moses, the fact is that I am Allah, the Almighty, the All-Wise. And put down your staff on the ground. When Moses put down his staff, he saw it shifting about as if it were a tiny serpent with quick movements. He turned his back, retreating, and did not look behind. Whereupon we said, O Moses, do not fear. Verily, I am the one in whose presence the messengers need have no fear nor does he fear who acts unjustly and commits some evil deed and then changes over to good after giving up evil. I am to such a person a great protector, ever merciful indeed. And put your hand into your bosom. It will come forth sparkling white without any disease. These are two signs from among the nine signs which you shall show to Pharaoh and his people. They are truly a rebellious people. But when our eye-opening signs were shown to them, they said, This is plain witchcraft. And they strongly rejected them, out of spite and arrogance, although their minds were convinced of the truth in them. Look then how evil was the end of those who acted corruptly. And we granted knowledge to David and Solomon. And they said, All true and perfect praise belongs to Allah alone, who has exalted us over many of his believing servants. And Solomon succeeded David, and he said, O you people, we have been taught the language of the birds, and also the technique of horsemanship and bestowed with everything essential to us. This indeed is a distinct favor of God and his grace. And they were gathered together before Solomon, his host comprising of jinn and ordinary men, and birds and swift-footed horses, and they were then arranged in separate well-disciplined columns. Once he was marching with them, until when they reached the valley of the tribe named El Namul, a distinguished Namalite said, O El Namul, get into your habitations, lest Solomon and his host should crush you unknowingly. Thereupon he, Solomon, wondered and was pleased with the good opinion the Namalite expressed about his own army and his army's power to and piety, and said, praying, My lord, Rouse me up that I may offer thanks for the favors you have shown me and my forefathers, and that I should do such deeds as are righteous and may please you.
and count me through your mercy with your righteous servants. And once he reviewed the birds and the cavalry of swift running horses and said, How is it that I do not see my officer named Hood Hood? Is he deliberately absent? I will certainly punish him severely. Rather, I will execute him, or else he must give me some valid excuse for remaining absent. But he, Solomon, had not to wait long before Hood Hood came and said, I have acquired that information which you do not possess. I have come to you from the territory of a Yemenite tribe, Sabah, with sure and important news to tell. I found there a wonderful woman ruling over them, the Sabaeans, and she has been given everything she requires and owns a magnificent throne. I also found her and her people worshipping the sun instead of Allah, and Satan has made their deeds fair-seeming to them, so that they take pride in their practices, and has thus hindered them from the right way, so that they do not follow true guidance. And Satan has done this so that they do not worship Allah, while Allah is he who brings to light all that lies hidden in the heavens and the earth, and knows all that you conceal in your minds, and all that you make known of your designs. Allah, there is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he, the Lord of the mighty throne. Thereupon Solomon said, We will now look into it and see whether you have spoken the truth or whether you are of the liars. Take this letter of mine, deliver it to them, then withdraw from them and wait what answer they make in return. When the queen saw the letter, she said, Chieftains, there has been delivered to me a noble letter. It is from Solomon. And it says, With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Do not rise up against me, but come to me, surrendering yourselves in submission. She said, Chieftains, give me your sound and mature advice in the matter which confronts me, for I decide no important matter except when you are present with me to advise. They said, We are a people possessing extraordinary power and are gallant fighters, but as for the decision, it rests with you. Therefore you may thoroughly consider what order you want to give. She said, Surely when the kings enter a township as invaders, they ruin it and reduce its most honorable residents to the most degraded positions. And such indeed will be their ways. I am going to send them a significant gift and shall wait to see what answer the envoys bring back. So when he, the queen's envoy, came with the present to Solomon, Solomon said, Do you mean to help me with your wealth? Well, what Allah has given me is far better than what he has given you. You seem to be rather proud of your gift. Go back to them and tell your people that we shall certainly come down upon them with hosts that have no power to withstand, and we shall surely drive them out from there, disgraced, while they are subjugated. Later on, addressing the courtiers, Solomon said, Nobles, which one of you will bring me the throne befitting her, before they come to me surrendering in submission? A stalwart from among the jinn said, I will bring it to you, prepared as you desire, before you rise and depart from your place of encampment. Surely I am strong and expert enough to accomplish this task, and can be trusted with it. One Israelite, who had knowledge of the scripture, said, I will bring it to you before your Yemenite noble guests come to you. And when he, Solomon, saw it, set before him. He said, This is due to the grace of my Lord, so that he may reveal my inner self to show whether I am grateful for all his favors 
or ungrateful. Indeed, he who thanks, his thanksgiving is for his own good, and he who shows ingratitude, let him remember that my Lord is truly self-sufficient and is in need of no praise, oft generous and noble in his own right. He further said, Make her own old throne seem discredited to her in her own estimation by making this new throne of a very excellent standard. We shall see thereby whether she follows the right way by discarding her old idolatrous throne or whether she is one of those who do not follow the right way. When she came to Solomon, it was said to her, Is your throne like this? She said, It is as though it were much the same. We had been given the knowledge about your excellence and perfection before this, and we have already surrendered in submission to you. And Solomon held her back from the things she used to worship apart from Allah, for she belonged to an unbelieving people. It was said to her, Enter the palace. And when she saw it, she took it for a great expanse of water. She was greatly perturbed. Solomon said, It is a palace paved smooth with slabs of glass. She, realizing the truth that she worshipped outward objects like the sun in place of reality, the true God, said, My Lord, I have done injustice to myself, and now I submit my Self through Solomon to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And likewise, we sent to Thamud their kinsman Soli, who said, Worship Allah. But as soon as they heard this preaching, they broke up into two factions who contended with each other. He said, O my people, why do you seek to hasten on evil rather than good? and you ask for a sign of destruction instead of that of bliss for you. Why do you not ask Allah's protection so that you may be shown mercy? They said, We have suffered due to you and your companions. Sali said, Your deeds and true cause of your sufferings is with Allah who is punishing you for your evil deeds. Nay, you are a people who are being tried to distinguish the good of you from the bad. And there were in the city a gang of nine persons who had upset the order and peace in the country and would not reform themselves. They said one to another, Let us swear by Allah that we will surely make a raid on him and his family by night, and then we will say to his claimant, the next of kin if he seeks vengeance, that we were not present at the time and place of the destruction of his family, and most surely we speak the truth. And they hatched a plot, and we likewise brought forth a counter-plan of which they were not aware. Look, then, how evil was the end their planning met. We utterly destroyed them and their people, one and all. So their houses are lying deserted over there because of their acting unjustly. Indeed, in this episode, there is a great sign for a people who would know. Whereas we destroyed them, we saved those who had believed and used to guard against evil. And we also sent Lot as a messenger. Recall when he said to his people, do you commit obscenity while you see the evil thereof? What? Is it true you approach men instead of your women to satisfy your lust? Nay, you are indeed a people who act senselessly. But his people had no reply except that they said, Drive the followers of Lot out of your township. They are a people who would pose and parade and be extra pure and righteous. So the result was that we saved him and his followers, except his wife. We had ordained about her for her foul deeds 
to be with those who stayed behind and thus would not be saved. And we pelted them with a terrible rain of stones. So look how evil was the rain which descended upon those who had been warned. Say, all kind of true and perfect praise belongs to Allah, and peace be upon those of his servants whom he has chosen, who is to be preferred, Allah, or the things they associate with him. Or who is it that created the heavens and the earth, and sends down water for you from the clouds? It is we. Then we cause to grow with it orchards full of bloom and loveliness. You had no power to cause their trees to grow. Is there any God with Allah? There is none. Yet there are a people who ascribe to him equals in all these works and deviate from the right path. Or who is it that made the earth a resting place and made the rivers flow in it and raised on the earth firm mountains for its advantage and put a barrier between the two waters? Is there a God with Allah as an associate with him in his works? Nay, not so. Yet most of them do not know the truth. Or who is it that answers the distressed person? when he calls on him and removes his distress. And who is it that makes you the rulers in the land? Is there any God with Allah? Little is the heed you take. Or who is it that guides you to the path of salvation in all kinds of darkness and vicissitudes on the land and the sea? And who is it that sends the winds as heralds of his mercy? Is there any God with Allah to do such things? Highly exalted is Allah above all the things they associate with him. Or who is it that originates the creation, then keeps on repeating and reproducing it? And who is it that provides for your sustenance, both physical and spiritual, from the heaven and the earth? Is there any God with Allah capable of being a partner with him in all these works? Say, bring forward your proof in support of your polytheistic beliefs, if you are truthful in what you claim. Say, there is no one in the heavens and the earth who knows the hidden realities save Allah. And they, the disbelievers, do not perceive when they will be raised up to life again after death. Nay, the fact is, their knowledge about the hereafter has found its limit. Rather, they are in doubt about it. Rather, they are totally blind to it. And those who disbelieve say, Is it that when we and our forefathers have been reduced to dust, we shall really be brought forth alive again? We have been surely given this promise once before this, and also our forefathers. But such a thing is nothing but tales of the ancients. Say, travel through the land, and behold how evil has been the end of those who cut off their ties with God. Prophet, do not grieve for them, nor feel distressed on account of their hostile intrigues against you. They say, when will this promise of your victory come to pass if you are truthful? Say, it is possible that a part of that victory which you are keen to precipitate may be close on your heels. And in fact, your Lord is full of grace to humankind, yet most of them render him no thanks. And surely your Lord knows the things which they hide in their hearts and those which they profess. There is nothing hidden in the heavens and the earth, but it is recorded in a book revealing the divine decree. Verily this Qur'an explains to the children of Israel, both the Jews and the Christians, most of the things concerning which they are at variance. And surely this is a source of guidance and mercy for the believers. Prophet, 
your Lord will rightly judge between them, the believing and the disbelieving people, with his command, the Qur'an. He is the Almighty, the All-Knowing. So put your trust in Allah, for surely you stand on manifest truth. Of course you cannot make the dead hear, nor can you make the deaf hear your call when they retreat turning their backs on you. And you cannot guide the blind as well out of their error. You can make only those to hear who believe in our messages, and so have surrendered themselves in submission to our will. And when the judgment becomes due against them, we shall bring forth for them a grossly materialistic person, which will rule over them. That is because the people did not have firm faith in our messages. And remind them of the day when we shall gather together from every people a large group of those who cried lies to our messages. Then that they shall be arranged in separate columns. Until when they arrive before their Lord, he will say, Did you not cry lies to my messages before you had gained full knowledge about them? Or what else was it that you had been doing about them? And the judgment becomes due against them because they acted wrongly and they will not be able to speak in their defense. Do they not consider that we have made the night for them to rest and have made the day for giving light? Surely in this there are signs for a people who would believe. And remind them of the day when the trumpet will be blown. Then, accepting those whom Allah will to keep them safe from terror, all those who are in the heavens and all those who are in the earth will be stricken with fear and everyone shall come in submission to him. You see the mountains, and think them to be firmly fixed, while in fact they are passing away like clouds. Such are the works of Allah, who has made everything perfect in every way. Verily, he is fully aware of your deeds. Those who come with good deeds before their Lord, shall have even better reward than they actually deserve. Such people will be secure from fear that day. Those who come with something evil shall be hurled headlong into the fire, and it will be said to them, You are certainly reaping the fruit of what you have been doing. Say, In fact, I am commanded to worship only the Lord of this city, Mecca, which he has declared sacred. Everything belongs to him, and I have also been commanded to be one of those who submit to his will, and to recite to the people, and follow the Qur'an. So one who on listening to it follows guidance does it for his own good. And tell him, who goes astray from the straight path, that my mission is only to give warning. And also say, all true praise belongs to Allah. He will soon show you his signs, and you shall recognize them. And your Lord is not at all unaware of what you do.